accuse me, like, say something to me that, that you think would be triggering. For example, we stayed together in the hostel and then now I'm gonna go to you and accuse you, hey, you took some stuff from my from the fridge that it was mine, why did you do that? Or That's not true. Come on, I saw you, man. <laughs> you saw me. Yeah. That's not true. As you noticed, I took a breath. I paused. That's not true. Boundaries within the relationships in my life, I've really had to learn by setting boundaries is protecting myself. I said, wait a second. I actually have to go now. Thank you for sharing. And I left. Sometimes we feel like we need to stay as people pleasers, right? We're afraid by, oh, we're going to hurt somebody's feeling. Oh, we're going to disappoint the person or we're afraid of conflict. How do I leave this situation without me feeling uncomfortable? If they just want to tell you them opinion and don't let you, you to tell them opinion, sometimes I just avoid them discussions like that. But it's funny that whenever people make a comment towards you or me, we take it so personally and we almost make it worse by trying to defend ourselves. One truth about life that I wish everyone would know is that... All right, guys, welcome to another podcast on the Robbie Moore Podcast Show. It's your boy, Robbie, and I'm here in Bogota, Colombia, and I'm super excited to have this new setup, and I'm so grateful for the producer, Juan, who's actually helping me set up this new podcast situation, and I'm excited to talk about today's discussion because today we're going to be talking about boundaries and self-care, and I've known a really good friend of mine for about a year now here in Bogota, Colombia. He is originally from Germany but he's also Mexican. I've never met a person that's half German and half Mexican. So this person was a milling machine creator, which is very interesting. I've never met somebody that has uh, that type of profession. So today I'm really excited because the importance of the topic of self-care and boundaries is something that really needs to be talked about today in 2024, especially with the social media platforms that we have today with people getting so distracted with just comparing themselves to other people when that should never be the case. The only person that we should really be comparing ourselves to is us and who we were yesterday and if we are improving every single day. So without further ado, today I am super excited to have my guest here, Pablo, onto the podcast show. So welcome, Pablo. Thank you for having me here. Yes, Robbie. I'm super excited to have I'm you. I'm super excited too. I'm a little bit nervous. It's okay. So, yeah. It's okay to be nervous. I'm <laughs> yeah. also a little bit nervous. That's totally okay. It's the first time you're professional podcast. It is. Yeah. I'm I'm very I'm very happy to have you here. So t how old are you, Pablo? So I'm 28 and now I'm traveling here a little bit of in South America and now it's the fourth or the fifth time I don't know exactly here in Bogota and now I'm here with you taking the podcast and talking about self-care mm -hmm. and other stuff. Cool. So what is it like to be your age? What's like to be my age? I think it's it's nice, but it's sometimes <laughs> I also, um, I don't know, would wish like I would be younger to, I don't know, to experience it all again. Mm -hmm. But I think 28 is okay. There were sometimes people say like, okay, if you're 30, it's going down. But I don't think so. It's just up, up to you what you're going to do with your age. Okay. And so what, we say like, you're just as old as you feel. Right. That's a good point. So why do you want to go back and experience things? Because I'm actually the opposite. You know, I, I prefer not to go back. I prefer to actually move forward. Yeah. Okay, yeah. I feel yeah. like I've experienced the majority of my life now. And I feel like I look back with all my kind of my pains and my struggles and the happiness and the things that I've done. But I don't know if I actually would want to go back. So why, why would you want to go back? Yeah, maybe that's the difference because you said like uh, all these pains and all, everything to go through it again, it would be like not so nice. But my past was like very nice. So for example, uh, the, that, the last one and a half year was very nice to mm. travel, but also when I was young, it was everything nice and I don't want to get old soon. So I, that's why I'm saying like, mm. it would be nice to go back again, but no, not really. I mean, just enjoy the moment, be in the moment and then everything is good. Okay. But if I would, 
I would have to ch to choose if I'm going to go older or younger, then I would go back to this time ah, okay. and repeat it again. But yeah, as you said, like if you're going through pain, then it's not so nice again. Right. So what does the present lo uh, moment look like for you? For me, yeah, I'm still traveling now. So How long have you been traveling? More than one and a half years, I think. It was last year in April. And I met you yeah. a year ago approximately or has it been less than that last year in october we were here okay. the first it's time been, in it's been a, about yeah, a year yeah, now so, okay, yeah it's cool. a year yeah all oh, right nice. yeah, yeah it's been right. almost a year high five <laughs> <Right. laughs> <laughs> awesome so the present moment what does it look like to you you've been traveling for a year and a half obviously you probably have learned a thing or two about yourself because i think that when you're traveling alone you're always experiencing you Right. Instead of just kind of living in your hometown and just having your routine. And there's kind of like these, this limited belief of like, um, I don't know, just this gradual learning experience where you're at in your comfort zone. But I'd imagine because you've been traveling for a year and a half, you've learned so much about yourself. Yeah, you learn a lot about yourself. For example, to organize all your stuff because you're traveling, you have to organize some buses where you're going to stay or some stuff like that. But also what I learned about myself, or maybe not about myself, it was just because I was traveling for so long time, I, meet a lot, I met a lot of other people. And then when you're talking to them, you can also learn about their perspectives from them and how they see the world. And you can learn, for example, I think here in Latin America is very common that you don't have to stress yourself that much. For example, in Europe or the German mentality is like very stressful sometimes because they have like the mentality, yeah, you have to work to build your own house and create a family. I don't know. And the other people here are like more chill, like... Yeah, don't don't take everything too serious. That's also a thing I learned about that. And yeah, a lot of things I think. Yeah, yeah but but that was the most imp uh, impressive thing or important thing to talk to other people. So they can teach you a lot of things. So if you talk to older people, to younger people, everyone mm. has to teach you something. I so think. can you remember an example of what you've learned from maybe some people you've met during your journey? Yeah, for example, I met you and you, I, I don't know, it was last time or, uh, yeah, I think last time that you said like something like, don't take everything too personal. It's not, mm. because sometimes the other people, they don't really mean it like that. And right. maybe you're just an overthinker and you think a lot of other stuff that the people doesn't even yeah. mean like that. No, I'm glad you brought that up. I mean, we also have had our own experience. I mean, you kind of have seen a couple different versions of myself just within a year. Yeah. For me, coming to Bogota, Colombia has been, you know, probably the biggest gift for me because aside from traveling, aside from experiencing new people, aside from sightseeing, it's just been simply therapy for me. You know, before, prior to coming to Colombia, uh, you know, a little bit about my story. I was not too sure of myself. I didn't really know what my favorite color was. I didn't know what my identity was. Coming to Colombia has really helped me to to form that, right? And I think within the year of meeting you, I also have, I remembered there was an experience where I too was taking things personally. And I'm so grateful that you kept coming back to Colombia to see the different versions of myself because I look back and I, I thought to myself, yeah, wow, I, I took things way too personal. And you're right, There's there's just so many experiences that we perceive from people like mm -hmm. we think it's one way but really like they didn't mean anything by it right is there an example that you can give with an experience that you've had like maybe something similar something similar no not uh, not really because i always was like that to, to not take something really personal or right. really i don't know i didn't no, exactly. Okay. Maybe, like you said, when we met us the first time, but it was otherwise. So right. I noticed that you took mm. maybe something personal, that it wasn't mean like that. Absolutely. But yeah, at the end, we, we knew that it was yeah. everything all right. So, right. yeah. Right. But in my opinion, I, I don't have like some experience for that okay. maybe yes well but that, I, I actually personally i'm so grateful for you i'm grateful to to have known you because it's almost like every time i meet somebody like you said you've met a lot of people on your travels you've learned from a lot of people right i learned a lot from you from me yeah, okay. your, your <laughs> yeah. sense of confidence and your security and you not taking things personally have a l rubbed off on me a little bit to okay, learn nice. not to take things too personally so i'm really grateful for you so talking about self-care 
Okay. This is a really important subject for me because I think in my opinion, there's a lot of people, not just in Colombia, not just in the United States, but the entire world that are not taking care of themselves as much as we should. So tell me a little bit about your experience with self-care. What does that mean to you? What are some things that you've done to be able to put yourself first? Yeah, self-care, it's a lot of different things, right? You can, to self-care is like you want to feel good in your body and in your mental health, like everything, it's all right. So I think, for example, you can self-care doing like sports and good nutrition, but also to feel good being yourself. I think you have to be confident. And to get this, some people say you have to go out of your comfort zone like mm. do experiments new stuff and so you you're going to learn more about yourself and so it's also affecting your self care maybe mm. and i think sometimes also when you do sports it's very important because sport if you move and do some sports it's also good for your mental health maybe mm. because last time i read some something that was like during your running or, or doing some sports you're not gonna think about negative things and that's mm. also self-care for me mental health i think oh yeah. good i think i could relate um, a few years ago i was a little bit overweight and i really just didn't like who i was and i remember when i started focusing on self-care dieting losing weight getting into the gym i started kind of valuing myself a little bit more i had more like self-dignity i appreciated who i was in the past i was just stuffing my face with so many chemicals you know that yeah. didn't really serve me you know and i think i i i kind of tend to get back into that where I'm like kind of eating junk food. And every time I do that, I feel so awful. I feel so bad about myself. Something I've learned about you is you're really dedicated with fitness. So how, how has fitness for you transformed your mental health and making yourself feel more confident? Has it always been this way? Oh, no, not always. I mean, I was always doing sports, playing football, or I don't know, for example, boulder or snowboarding, mm. some stuff like that. But I think the main thing, or not the main thing, but if you're going to the gym or doing some lifting some weights, then you, of course your body is going to change. And if you see you're in the mirror and you see these results that you're changing, mm. that's also good for you because of, your, like you said, about your confidence. But mm. it all has like to be with discipline. You cannot, yeah, because if you're going to quit, then it's going to be, you can, you can go back to the bad habits maybe right. and eat junk food and all this stuff. And then you're going to feel again bad and you're gonna see you in the mirror and you're gonna be like disappointed maybe and yeah you have always to be disciplined mm. and so yeah you feel better in your body or if you see you in the mirror and you're more confident and if you're more confident i think um it's like the other people are gonna notice that and if you're more confident the other people are gonna treat you maybe better maybe interesting so, so, and, so and also it's gonna be if they treat you better then you're gonna feel better and that's also again mm. the self-care okay. so yeah yeah, and what's also important for self-care, I would say, um, you have to go maybe out of your comfort zone sometimes, but you also have to avoid people or avoid some situations that you don't like because some people, they're just taking too much energy from you or they're just, uh, I don't know, using you as doing some they, stuff they like They call that. those people energy vampires. Energy vampires. So avoid the did energy we, vampires. Did we talk about this? I don't know because, like, I as, think like we I had said a discussion you, about this. Like the last time we were here, yeah. But I just remember we from, did talk from the about last this. week. I told to talk to another guy from my hostel about the same issue. Yeah, like, yeah. You have to avoid those people that the the people that take too much energy from you. T tell me a perfect example of that you've had with a energy vampire and how that felt. Yeah, it depends. For example. I'm avoiding always to discuss with people about some issues or topic I'm not re I don't really care or if I'm noticing this people this this guy or the other person is not going to change their mind so if they are like very I don't know how is it called stubborn if they just want to tell you them opinion and don't let you you to tell them opinion um, then it's like difficult and I don't like to have them some discussions without mm. nonsense so um, yeah sometimes I just avoid then discussions like that for example uh, okay. it's good to because these people are just gonna talk a lot of bullshit and, right. uh, not bullshit no but I maybe totally agree with you I mean like I that. can't tell you how many experiences that I've had with just 
somebody not wanting it, it didn't really feel like a two way conversation. I've had so many of those where yeah. I feel like this is now a, a one way conversation. Like any input that I I have, the other person's not going to listen to it. They're not going to value my opinion. It's just yeah. about what they have to say. And here I am, just kind of listening and accepting that this energy vampire is just depleting my energy. And, no, so yeah, you have to avoid this. And you're right. Those thing. are the people that we really need to avoid. You know, I had an experience a few months ago, and this person was talking about a political subject that I just knew I wasn't educated on. And also, I knew that I just didn't agree with this person. But the person just kind of pounded the information on me. Every time I kind of had an opinion and I said, hey, you know, actually, what about that? He said, oh, no, don't you dare. Don't you dare tell me this, right? And I said, wait a second, wait a second. That's where I started practicing my boundaries, which is another subject that we're talking about today, is boundaries, self-care and boundaries. Yeah. Boundaries is a thing that I think most people today in the world are just not educated in, right? Boundaries is something that I've learned just because within the relationships in my life, I've really had to learn by setting boundaries, it's protecting myself, right? So what I told this gentleman who's just kind of pounding his information on me, being an energy vampire, I said, wait a second, I actually have to go now. Thank you for sharing. And I left, right? Yeah, yeah. I think the important part is that sometimes we feel like we need to stay within situations. You we need, need to, to stay, stay in. right? Because we're yeah. afraid as people pleasers, right? We're afraid by, oh, we're going to hurt somebody's feeling. Oh, we're going to disappoint the person or we're afraid of conflict. How do I leave this situation without me feeling uncomfortable, right? So boundaries is a subject that I think is not talked about enough. I think it's it's being talked about within the last few years ever since the pandemic, because I think most people, you know, went back to living at home and being with their families and learned that, oh my gosh, I actually really don't get along with these people or some of these people. So boundaries, what are some examples that you've applied in your life, especially with this, with this uh, example that you said, you know, energy vampires, or, or it, could be, it could be other examples? Uh, other examples, but I would say like the same of you. If someone, I don't know, if someone gets some stubborn and maybe hurts your feelings, if your feelings are going to get hurt, I think you should put this boundary and say like, okay, this was too much. Hey, listen to me. I don't feel like, I don't feel good at this point, but what you, ever you said. And that is, for example, one boundary you have to set because if they're going to hurt your feelings, sometimes a little bit, it's okay. But if it's going to get too much, you just tell those people. And if they don't really understand, then you, you, you should left, for mm. example. Yeah, that's how I would put my boundaries about that okay. because yeah but if they're hurting your feelings it's not nice right right i think right. yeah but other other examples for boundaries i don't know maybe have you applied uh, certain boundaries with your family or no. have you had to it seems like you have a really healthy family dynamic. yeah that, that's <laughs> like, awesome. well, i'm actually I, super yeah. jealous <laughs> no my family i don't know my family treats me very good so that's amazing yeah. well do, can you Introduce me to your family. Do you guys have a spare bedroom uh, that I could stay in? <laughs> yeah, or? of course. You can come to Germany. Of course, there's a house. There's a room for you if you want. Awesome. Go. Yeah. So you know, so every time, everywhere, uh, welcome. Thank you, Pablo. Something else I've learned recently. I wasn't really the best with conflict in the past. Okay, why? I was probably the worst person because I was always avoiding conflict because it was so uncomfortable for me. That I thought I was going to die. Like, I thought that something would happen in me and I would just, like, fall face first on the ground and just, like, you know, fetal position, right? And I think that had a lot to do with my childhood. It had a lot to do with my upbringing and not knowing that I had a voice or that I had an opinion, right? So, something that I learned recently, which I find very valuable, is... Before saying any word, right? In the past, if somebody said something that I disagreed with or if said, somebody said something that was very triggering for me, mm -hmm. I always jumped to the defense. Okay, yeah. I, I was always like this, this inner reaction in me, always wanted, but, you like but that's not true. You, you have to defend right? yourself. But that's again. not true. Like, no. I never said that. Like, what do you, wait, 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 right? I've learned now to focus on my breath being the first word. 
Okay, yeah. What and I you would... always have to be calm. I exactly. Think. If you have like some discussion with someone, you should be calm and relax. And I don't know if the other people is getting angry, just let him be like he, he wants to be. Yeah, this 100%. Person. But you always have to be concentrated and calm because, yeah, that's the best way to discuss, I think. But that's something I think you have in you that I'm learning from you. To be calm and yeah. don't get stressed You're so pretty much. calm and then you have all this kind of, kind of like a casual smile. You almost invite people to feel comfortable with you, right? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. Yeah, so that's something I'm learning about you. So I'm, that's something I'm, I'm grateful for you. Uh, but talking about the first breath, okay? So let me give you an example. Okay, let's say somebody said something and accused me of something. Right. And I know it's not true. Yeah. But the inner child in me, that should be its own podcast discussion, you know, inner child, right? The inner child in me wants to defend myself because as a kid, you know, we remember when we were kids and our parents accused us of doing things that we knew we didn't do. Yeah. We'd always be like, no, I didn't do that. And then like we'd yell and scream and it, it caused a, a fight or an argument. So I'm, I'm noticing to really engage with that inner child and noticing that, hey, you know what? I've got this. Yeah, I'm the adult so now. Calm down. I'm child, the adult yeah. now. So we're, we're good. So by me taking a breath and be, having that be the first word really helps me to set the tone. What do you mean with breath? Like taking... I'll give you an example. Teeth breath? So or? why don't you give me... Uh, accuse me. Say something to me that is that you think would be triggering or just... It could be any topic. And I'll give you an example of what I mean. Okay. Something. It could, it could be a, an accusation. It could be something, you know, a remark about how I look. Okay. For example, we stayed together in the hostel. And then now I'm going to go to you and accuse you. Hey, you took some stuff from my from the fridge that it was mine. Why did you do that? Or, yeah. For example, that. Would you trigger that? <sighs> That's not true. Come on. I saw you, man. <laughs> you saw me. Yeah. That's, I'm just, that's I, not true. If, if this other guy is just lying, what are you going to say? That's not true. Well, you know, here's the thing. You know, nobody will ever say, well, actually, you, you'll get narcissists saying, I saw you, because that's a gaslighting move, right? Okay, yeah. So going back to the example of the, the breath being the first word, as you noticed, I took a breath. I paused. That's not true. That's not true. Because the first breath is allowing me that space and that pause to really be within myself. But if I, if I used my first words, it would really come out to be like, what the hell are you talking about? Like, whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, okay, you know, so yeah. You know, yeah. it would first be so take defensive, a deep right? And think about what you're going to say. Something I've learned, Pablo, uh, from a person that I really admire in my life, he said, use five words or less. Five words or less. Five words or less. And, you know, in the past, I noticed, man, I really overshared with a lot of people. Yeah. You know, like, like I literally gave them the key to my life. Yeah, no, you should not <laughs> overshare to everyone. You exactly. should just have like a few close friends. Right. That, that was also, I was talking last day or yes, yeah, a few days ago to another um girl in the hostel and she said like the same she said like she has only like three or two close friends the other one are just like other people she knew but the really it's, it's just like three friends like other person you can every tell everything but yeah like you said you shared maybe too much to, to other mm. people and it's also like I don't know if too much people know a lot of you. They can also hurt you about that with this kind oh, of absolutely. stuff. Oh, so, yeah. so absolutely. So you should be careful with... Do you who, have an example? Do you have a certain amount of friends in your life that you really know? These are the go-to people that I know that I can trust. And then you have like some other acquaintances that you just kind of share your time with. Yeah, for me, in my example is like I'm sharing my stuff barely maybe to one or two friends but the other friends are really cool so I, I also call them friends but so really really close friends I would say yeah maybe three friends I don't mm. know but not so much but the other ones are also cool but it doesn't mean that I don't like th that I like them less it's just right. to the, the, the three kind of friends or this to the three people I really trust them mm. so yeah so you value each kind of category differently I think you have to do that right. no? because like you said if you if you 
sharing your stuff to everyone it's not good it's not good so, yeah. i mean that that's kind of what i was doing my entire life and i'm so glad that i learned that in the last what four or five years that it's been progressively getting better and and that's something that is so great about being a human being we don't have to be perfect no nobody is we perfect. can be we a can, human being but we can also not we be can perfect. keep yeah. learning yeah you have to always you're gonna learn yeah some we can keep stuff. learning yeah. we can keep growing we can keep becoming the different versions of ourselves without any shame No. I think that most people today have this idea of like, oh, if I messed up, I'm just like a piece of crap because now here I am, society's looking at me, people are looking at me, I messed up. And it's it's creating this shame within themselves. And something that's really interesting that I've learned, Pablo, is we don't necessarily have to be doing anything wrong to feel shame. No. You don't, but I don't know. I uh, There's something you can do that you're going to feel shame. But yeah. the most important thing about this is, uh, not about that, but what you said, I think you just have to be good for you and not for the other people. So you don't have to really care what the other people think. So, But that's a hard thing to do. Yeah, that's uh, in this times it's a hard thing to do because of the, all do. the social media. Everyone is posting right. some pictures. That, oh, I have to go there. Also, I have to take the same picture. I don't know. So yeah, the social media is also triggering maybe the how you're gonna feel uh, that, like this. Mm. Yeah, so it's a tough thing to do. I mean, that was something that I had a hard time my entire life caring about what other people thought. I actually thought at one point in my life I don't care about what people think. But I actually did. It was just kind of like uh, trying to like really look cool. Uh, okay. You know, yeah. like I don't care about what people think. This way people heard me say it. Now they know that I don't care. But genuinely, I actually did care. Yeah. And I didn't know that. But how is it now? Now, I wouldn't say it's perfect, right? But it's an awareness. I think I'm aware You know, before I was so confused to the idea of how people kind of acted towards me, what they said towards me, and I would take it so personally that I would just for a week just have shame, right? Yeah. And now today I can be aware enough about it and recognize that whatever people say or do is not a projection of me. It's no. a projection of who they are. Yeah, of it's course. A proje yeah. It's a projection of how they feel about themselves. And You know, I read a book. I highly recommend this book. If you guys get a chance to, I don't know if you guys are audi auditory uh, listeners or readers, but please, please, please get this book. I, I recently read this book. It's called When I Say No, I Feel Guilty. When I Say No, I Feel Guilty. And I don't know the yeah. author, but I'm very grateful for this book and I'm reading it for the second time right now. So there's a technique called the fogging technique. Fogging technique. What do you think the fogging technique? What does that sound like to you? I'm curious. I don't know. I don't know exactly, but it has to be something when you what you said. When you say no, you don't have to feel guilty, or you feel guilty, mm -hmm. but maybe you you don't have to feel guilty. Maybe sometimes you feel guilty, but mm -hmm. it's also like you said about self care. When you say no, or the boundaries. When you say no, it's also a boundary. I mean, it's just for your self protection. So why you should feel guilty? Right. So I don't know what you mean with this. Well, part. is there, okay, so there's probably some truths that you believe about yourself, right? There's some kind of, maybe some, some insecurities that you really know about yourself, right? Well, what if somebody really hits home and says a comment and it really sticks with you because you know uh, a part of that comment might be true. You know, it's a lot easier for if somebody were to give me a comment and I know it's not true. It doesn't affect yeah, me. Yeah, but if it's it, true, if it's going to affect If you. somebody told me, like, you're a Coca-Cola head, right? I'd be like, uh, you're a little bit weird, you know? <laughs> okay, thank uh, yeah. you. I don't care. That, like, yeah, this, like, yeah. I, you should go away because, like, you're not interesting to me, right? Yeah, but if But if somebody so. said something like, well, Robbie, hey, like, you know, you're super sensitive and, like, you, you know, like, you're you're very clingy. Clingy. Clingy, right? Okay. If somebody said something like that to me and I didn't know the person mm -hmm. I'd be like ooh that literally hit yeah it because I know hit, yeah. that in the past I have been clingy I know in the past I have been overly sensitive right not that sensitivity is a bad thing it could be a gift but it's funny that whenever people make a comment towards you or me or anyone yeah we take it so personally and we almost make it worse by trying to defend ourselves Yeah, okay. that could be true, yeah. So the fogging technique is interesting. 
Okay. It's something that I am so thankful that I've learned in the last just few months now. If somebody makes a comment, the fogging technique consists of agreeing with them. Just agree. Just okay. agree. Yeah. With them. Okay. That that's good. Yeah. So the fogging technique, what it does is it allows the comment to go directly into the fog and it just dissipates. Yeah. There's nothing the other recipient can do with it because you've literally just agreed to it. But I mean, it's not that easy, no? I mean, it's going to hurt you maybe anyways if you're saying, yeah, okay, you're right, it's okay. But mm. yeah, that's maybe the most difficult thing to do really to this fogging technique. It's because hard. if you're just saying, yeah, you're right, it's not going to be like, you have to really believe in this fogging technique it, it's it, it can be hard and what i'm what i'm saying is not agreeing with them directly what okay. i'm saying is that maybe we can memorize a couple responses with things that might be like that could be true or you might be right you might be right yeah you know if somebody told me hey robbie i really don't like the way your eyes look in your glasses i said you know what a lot of people think that <laughs> Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so you know, you because because like that. you know, yeah, just right. incredible technique. It just it, it's so mind blowing to me that my entire life I haven't even known about this technique because the amount of heartache that I would have saved myself just by fogging, I mean, would have saved me years of just like taking things personally. No, and this technique is also good because maybe the other person is not gonna think about that or expect this reaction of you. So maybe they want to, I don't know, have a discussion or some stuff like that. And right. if you're just arguing or saying, yeah, okay, it's right what you said, then they are like, maybe what do surprised. I do with that? Okay, what I'm gonna, yeah, yeah, what, what do, do I do with that? that? Because if you notice, there's energy vampires. Yeah, Nar narcissistic personality yeah. disorders, right? I've noticed there's certain personalities in the world that are very insecure, mm -hmm. that are willing to dominate other people to make themselves look elevated, yeah. look better in the yeah, crowd. They also tell you a lot of stuff that they do good and not right. what you do good. Like and the interesting something. thing about that is, let's say we're in a group setting, Okay. Yeah. You and I kind of have a very good self-awareness about ourselves, right? But Other people in the group might not notice that the person that's dominating is the insecure one. Yeah, I read something like if there's someone in this room, the one who is like yelling at you, that's the insecure one. The other one who is like sitting silent, he's like, okay, secure. So the loudest person, maybe it's also insecure and he wants to point on the other people in this group and telling them, hey, you're doing this wrong, you're doing this wrong, or that, that's not good. Mm. So, Have you had an experience like that with somebody giving you unsolicited advice or just assuming things about you that were not true? Mm, no, I don't During think your so. travels? No, because no? I, no, I, I don't think so. Wow. No. During my travel. Pablo, you've, I'm very you've graduated life. You've basically. <laughs> I, I don't know, but I'm very lucky during my travel. That's I awesome. Never, I, I think never, you have like, really good energy. It could you be. Do. You do have good energy. Because you I never had problems with other guests in the hostel, That's other amazing. persons. Uh, yeah, during this travel, it was never a problem wow. with other persons. Yeah. Wow. But it's also maybe someone tried to trigger me or someone t tried to say some th some bullshit but uh, like i said so you have just to avoid this kind of people or just, just go avoid away them. so yeah that's maybe the reason why i didn't face this situation because i'm just mm. yeah when i see some people that i think yeah okay maybe it's not going to be the best vibe then I'll just go or just talk less to them but mm. not so much so you said something very interesting right now you said pick and choose the people you want to be around You didn't say those exact words, but that's exactly how I took it. Avoid certain people. Yeah. Right? In the past, I didn't know I had that choice. The yeah, okay, that's the part. I, I, I thought I thought genuinely I had to like be around everyone and be accepted. And if somebody didn't like me, then you know, like I had a problem, right? I you know, there could have been like in the past, I'm talking about maybe like five or six years ago, even beyond that, if there were a hundred people in the room. And 99 people liked me and one person didn't. That yeah. would have really bothered me. Yeah. yeah. So you tried that this one person liked you. Exactly. Yeah, okay, I would yeah, focus on that one yeah. person. Yeah. Okay. That's and that, so what good. I'm trying to tell you is that in the past, 
you know, I was also very insecure and I learned that I was clinging off of people that were dominating me, those energy vampires. Yeah. But now that I'm more aware in my life and I'm more self, you know, I'm more centered, I'm more aware of myself, I have much more com- self-compassion, much more self-forgiveness, I can actually really focus on the people that are, that are going to serve me. Yeah. You know, that are going to give me that good energy, that it's going to be a mutual connection, you know? So, yeah, it's good to know for you. That yeah. You, because there are sometimes people that they're just rubbing you a lot of energy. Mm. And then, yeah, you have to write them, I think. So, going to boundaries. All right. I know this is a hard subject. Boundaries. And I know that, correct me if I'm wrong, I've been to Germany a couple of times. And, you know, hello. Uh, Germany. Hello, Germany. <laughs> <laughs> Greetings to Germany. Greetings to Germany. Um, you know, I love the German culture. I love my German friends. Something I really love about Germans is how loyal they are. You know, like it's really hard to get into a group of uh, like a, a network, uh, like a, a group of friends in Germany. But once you're in, it's almost like this loyalty. Would you agree with me? In this group. Yeah, yeah, I would agree with you that's not so easy to get in some groups because the German culture is like very, very close and very cold they say mm. but yeah if you're in the, we Germans can be also funny and open but yeah sometimes it's like difficult to get in some groups but if you're in then yeah they are loyal to Germans I like that yeah I like about the, I like that about my German friends but something I've learned and correct me if I'm wrong also please correct me if I'm wrong in the comments that some of my German friends a little bit older in generation tend to give unsolicited advice or Give advice when it's not asked for. Is that true? Yeah, yeah it's true. I'm not sure. Like, Correct I, me if I'm like wrong. Like I told you, for example, it was like this German mentality is always to work, work, build a house and have a family. That's the German, or maybe I think that's the German mentality. So also when I told them, some co-workers, some colleagues in my, where I was working, I told them, yo, I'm going to go for traveling for one and a half years or two years or I don't know how long. They... Also, in, instead of saying, or oh, not all, all, but there were some people, some German people, they were just like, why are you going to go to travel? You have to work and do this stuff because you need this money to build a house. So I didn't ask for this opinion. So I just told them that I'm going to go travel. And they always they are giving you like an advice that maybe you don't want to hear it or... Yeah, that's true. Hmm. They, okay. But I don't I'm think that, it could be that it's very, it could also be positive because yeah, they just want to help you maybe. But right. sometimes it's also annoying because like you said, so I didn't ask for it. So hmm. why are you telling me this? I think that I'd be more comfortable with unsolicited advice if I didn't come from a very unhealthy dynamic. Yeah. Because when I was a child, I was giving advice left and like somebody, people were giving me advice left and right and I was never asked You know, like, this is what you should do, you know, in my culture, being an Arab, you know, Jordanian, like, that's just something that we do in our culture, you know, you should do this, or you should never do this, you know, yeah. because most people in my generation, especially the older generation, tend to think that they just know everything, you know? Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> but that's it. I think it's in every culture, no? that the older <clears throat> generation, they always... But because maybe it's also not so easy for the older generation to accept that they are old now and they don't knew, knew the, all the new stuff. So maybe they mm. just want to feel better if they give you some advice. I don't know. But yeah, normally it's like the oldest person always want to tell you what to do. But at mm. some point it's going to change. Like the younger people are, are going to know more than the older people. But maybe that's difficult for them to accept. Or to yeah, yeah, to recognize. That's a good point. So you're half German and half Mexican. Yeah. So yeah. How did it work that I yeah, half German? Yeah, yeah, okay, t- yeah. My mom, she's German. She's from uh, we are from the south of Germany. So she, one day she was tra- or one day, one time she was traveling through Mexico and there she met my father and yeah, then she stayed there was the, in Mexico and Yeah, then first was my sister, and now I'm here. So that's, that's amazing. How, how, many, get, how many siblings do you have? I just have one sister. Okay. I want Jess. It's okay with And she's you. also half Mexican and half she's German. Half. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, yeah, I'm not sure. But <laughs> All right, we have to figure that out. Half yeah. Mexican, half German. Yeah, and that's how... How I'm half Mexican. That's half amazing. German. You know, I've never met a half German and half Mexican. When you told me that, I was dumbfounded. 
yeah, was just yeah. like, wow, that is super cool. Yeah, there's not, there's not so I, much. Because like, I see the Mexican in you, and I also see the German in you. But what would you think about, for example, my face? It looks like Latin so, or German. So, you know how like they have those like... Um, those little things where you could turn and it looks different. Like I could totally see the Mexican in you and I could see the German. It's just, it, I could turn it on and off. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah because in, in Germany, they always, <clears throat> Germany, they always say like, or oh, they see me as the Mexican, right? And in Mexico, they see me as the German. So I don't know. But the last time in the other hostel, there was another guy. He said like, no, you'd look completely Mexican, but mm. I don't know. Some people See well, what do you what do you think you look like more? I think s since I have this beard, maybe more Mexican, okay. but without beard, maybe German. More German, yeah, yeah. So that's interesting. Okay, cool. So which? Okay, so tell me a little bit about about what do you appreciate about the Mexican side, and then what do you appreciate yeah, about, about the, the German, German side? side, and what? And then we'll move on to the opposite. Okay, questions. yeah. About the well, what I appreciate about the Mexican side, or maybe it's just this Latin vibe. Like I said, that they are more relaxed here, not, not the mentality like in German, uh, in Germany. They are more relaxed. Um, what else? Of course, the the culture I appreciate more from Mexico because of yeah, they have a lot of nice story and nice uh, kitchen. The Mexican food is the best one, I would mm. say. Um, what I don't like maybe about the slats is that they are sometimes too relaxed. For example, in Germany, we are very punctual. So if you say you're going to be here at 2 p.m., so as a, my German mindset or mentality, I'm going to be here at 2 p.m. But with the Mexicans or the Latin, um, they also are, Colombians. <laughs> also Colombians, they are like very late or they don't care yeah. really about that. So and that have would, you noticed that they don't take offense to each other's lateness? No. That, yeah, but that's also cool. But I, I, I think appreciate that's cool. about the I culture do, because yeah. they're going to ask like, yeah, how was your way here to get here? And in Germany, the first question is going to be why you're late. So yeah, that's the difference. And also what I appreciate about Germans that they are very organized. Like mm. everything has, this, I don't know how to explain, but they're very organized and the Mexican, not, not, not that so much. much. So are you organized? I think, yeah. I'm, yeah, yeah I'm, yeah, I think yes. Is it, <laughs> I okay. would say, would yeah. you, con would you consider yourself more German or more Mexican? Oof, that's difficult. I, well, I don't know. I would say half, half. half yeah. Half? There's some okay. things that I do like a Mexican and some things I do, very like a real German, I think. Mm, okay. Yeah. And how often do you spend in Mexico? And how often do you spend in Germany? Yeah. So I was like, I don't know exactly, but I was like grown up two years in Germany, two years in Mexico, two years in Germany, two years in Mexico. And then when we moved, I, I was like eight, seven or eight years when we moved finally to Germany. So when I, we moved finally to Germany and I went to school there, there were like three big uh, holidays christmas summer and what was eastern maybe i don't know but there were three times i went back to mexico so every holiday is long that is longer than two and a half weeks we went back to mexico to visit the family but so i would say every year like three times mexico mm. and what's a tradition you really like going when you go back to mexico what's your favorite tradition I, w I wouldn't call it tradition, but my f okay, of course, the best thing is to see my father there. So I would say the best thing is to go home and then after that to visit the family and after that to visit my friends. Mm. Oh, yeah. Sometimes I first I visit my friends because the family of my father, they live like one and a half hours away from us and my friends are like to the next door. So that's my favorite tradition to visit everyone first and then to go eat the Mexican food what's your favorite mexican food my favorite mexican food is tacos yeah tacos, tacos. yeah tacos. what type, what type of meat tacos uh like barbacoa i think oh, okay. yeah tacos de barbacoa but tacos al pastor is also i don't know <laughs> every taco is yeah. nice so i can choose a favorite one but i would say a taco de barbacoa yeah that's nice that's yeah ovirria yeah mm. that's yeah. Very cool. What about you? Have you tried Mexican food? Of course. I've been all over Mexico. During the pandemic, I was in Mexico. So what's your favorite food? I would say my favorite Mexican food is tostada. Tostada. Okay. Yeah. This, yeah okay. Yeah. 
Yeah, I like it. And then also tamales. Tamales. Yeah, I know uh, Colombian has tamales. Yeah, there's also tamales. tamales but you know what? Tamales here are not the same no, it's as they not are in the Mexico. Same. Because last time, I don't know if you were there, but Patricia made some tamales. The, she did. You know, I've noticed Colombian food, although it's good, it's just there's not a lot of spice. Yeah, in Mexico is a lot of spice. I like the spice. But... You're you're not spicy, too, yeah, but, <laughs> but not too much spice. I don't know. Not I, too much spice. Yeah, yeah, I'm not. So you don't really like picante. I like picante, but not so not much. Not so much. So that's some, the German side of you coming in. Yeah, that's maybe the German <laughs> side. Because sometimes I don't know if I'm visiting my family and they put a lot of spice in the soup or in some food. I don't know. Like if I would put the same amount of spice they put the same mm. chili I, I think I cannot like really taste anymore the food I'm just suffering because of this picante and the, I agree. it's just sweating so sometimes more or less but mm. less. cool well Pablo I'm, I'm super grateful for you I'm so I think that you know the universe put us together as friends we should yeah. have been childhood friends like it just should have happened you should have called me when you were younger yeah fuck, it know. was my mistake sorry <laughs> I should you know have called, like. It's fine. We're starting now. Super grateful for you. You're heading to Mexico soon for um uh it, How long I'm going to go? No, you're going to Mexico yeah, soon. Yeah, and, and next week on Wednesday. Wednesday. And yeah. you're celebrating um Dia de los Muertos okay, Day. Yeah. Cool. Dia de los and Muertos. do you go there every every year? No, that, that's the first time I'm going to be there on Dia de los Muertos because like <laughs> I told you we went three times a year to Mexico but it was never on Dia de los Muertos mm -hmm. or also this Independence Day on 16 September I think we also were never there because the, the holidays in Germany the last day is like 7 September so mm -hmm. I have never been to the Independence Day in Mexico cool that should yeah. be exciting so and you'll get to see your family yeah, you'll set boundaries no, you don't need to set no, boundaries. My, my family. family is okay. Yeah. So I don't <laughs> yeah. Okay. Cool. Yeah. So yeah. Okay. Cool. This has been a good discussion. I know that it seems like you, your life is in order, and you have a really good family system, which I really, really want to congratulate you for because that's not always the case. And I think I've yeah, told no. you that maybe a few months ago that like Pablo, you're so blessed and you're so lucky to have a family that's just uh, unconditional love, you know? Yeah, that's... And, and that's really, that. really hard to find. You know, not to find. We're all born into our families, unfortunately. But I, I really do believe that family doesn't have to be blood. You know? No, no, because last time in the, uh, the hostel, I don't know <laughs> what's going on in the hostel, there was also another guy, he said, you don't have to love every member just because he's a member of your family. Absolutely. So, yeah. yeah. So, like you said, not just blood is family. Yeah, something I've learned about my own family is that I love every one of my family unconditionally, right? I used to in the past maybe have had different opinions just based on hurts and things that have happened and experiences in the past. But what, what I've learned about my life is that we have one life and we have one family. Yeah. And then we have our friends, right? And I, I have many friends in my life that I really do consider like my family. Like they're there through thick and thin. What I love about accepting forgiveness and compassion for my, cho my family is that as much as I don't want people to change me, I can't change my family. No. Yeah. Every individual person has the right and the dignity to think how they want, to, to do how they want, to not, you know, like, for example, if somebody doesn't want to speak to you, right? Yeah. That's something you have to accept. That's something that we have to accept. Yeah, you cannot right? force the we other can't people force, to, We can't yeah. force solutions. No. And what I'm grateful for about this experience and this new, new awareness about my life right now is that I've learned to really put the focus back on myself to learn what I do have control over yeah. within myself yeah, and stop you, yeah. pointing the finger because every time I point the finger, there's three things there's three fingers pointing right back at me. And that was my problem. In the past, I was always pointing the finger and there was always three fingers pointing right back at me. It was almost like I was doing myself a disservice by judging others, right? Mm -hmm. But like we talked about earlier in the conversation, we never know how people's intentions are. We don't know, you know, somebody can give me a look and I'd think, yeah, that guy doesn't like me, but he just probably had a little yeah, booger. Yeah, you yeah, know? maybe that's yeah, a good example. It's, it's, yeah. just, it's crazy <laughs> yeah. how our minds go like this way and this way in life. We're assuming things about other people and it's like we're literally wasting mental space based on imaginary things. 
I would say 95% of my problems are self-created. Yeah, because maybe you think too much. Exactly. It. Because like you said, if this other person doesn't want to talk to you, it doesn't mean that they are like mad at you or that they don't like you. Maybe they're just thinking about something or in another situation right now. And so that's maybe the reason. Yeah. And, so and don't take it too personal. And even if it is true, if they don't like me, that's okay. That's not my problem. Yeah. That's That's their business. Yeah. You know, what other people think of me is not my business. It's not. It's like that's how And you think. always have to think about there's always someone going to be there. Always. That don't, oh, my they, gosh. Yeah. Just imagine if we just, revo you know, we relied on other people's opinions on us. Uh, oh, we would be screwed. Like, yeah, yeah. It's totally <laughs> screwed. Would be, It'd be like crazy. Like, we would not go to sleep at night, you know? No, you would think a lot of uh, bullshit. I don't know. Yeah. So, so one last question for you, Pablo. Okay. Before And I'm so grateful that you joined me on this podcast. Yeah, I appreciate you're, it. I'm you're my, be you're my best I friend and be my here. only friend friend like don't mess that up you know <laughs> hey what <laughs> i'm just kidding no it's too much pressure again all right so what is one truth about life that you wish everyone would know one truth about life that everyone should know mm. wow that's a different difficult question oh you can think about it all right i'll start you you think yeah. about yours and i'll and i'll share one truth about life that i wish everyone would know is that you can love yourself enough to let go of people. To what? You can love yourself enough to let go of people that don't serve you. Okay, yeah, but that's very... That's a very hard step, I think. It's a Let really hard step. Go like, for example, like. just just a few weeks ago, just being in my apartment alone, something hit me, and there was just like all these insecurities surfacing. I said, "This needs to happen." I think most people are distracting themselves within social media, within being with friends, going to parties, shaking their booty at a nightclub. They're not spending enough time with themselves to know how to truthfully feel those uncomfortable feelings. And what I've learned is that when we sit with ourselves enough for a long period of time and really get to know who we are, we can love ourselves enough to not care too much about how the exterior world thinks about us. Yeah, that's a good point, I think. You have to, yeah, because, yeah, like you said, but another truth about life. That everyone appreciate or value, put themselves their value. And the first thing you're going to think is you have to first think about you. Because if you want to help, for example, if you want to help other people, first you have to be okay and then you can help other people. So it's mm. like, I don't know if you have, would like to share something about this cup. This cup has to have something. You cannot share nothing. So first you take care about you and then you help other people. That's what I say. Like. I love that. I just love that because in the airplanes, they say, please put on the mask on you first yeah, that's and then assist example. the next person. Yeah. You know, just imagine that we don't know who we are. We're, you know, kind of just wallowing in self-pity. We're insecure. And we have somebody we care about that we need to help. We can't even take care of them because we can't even take care of ourselves. No, yeah. Yeah, that's also with the boundaries, like right. you said. First put the boundaries, then you take care about yourself, and then you can right. go out and help the other ones. Wow. Yeah. This has been amazing. Like, I'm so grateful, first of all, that I have you as a friend and that this was like a last-minute thing. Thank you for, you know, accepting this invite to be on the no, podcast. Thank you for inviting and me. And I also just want to tell you, Pablo, you are really on a good track in life. You have a good head on your shoulders. Uh, if you don't mind, I'm, I know that I'm giving you, I'm not giving advice, but do you, do you mind if I give you my opinion? <laughs> give your opinion. My opinion is that you are definitely a great guy. Thank you, man. And you have a really good journey ahead of you. And I, I hope and wish safety in your travels. And I, I hope that when you get back to Mexico, you have a, an incredible time with your family. And that I know that I have a, a friend that I can keep in touch with and yeah, we can well, share experiences. Sure. All right. That's for sure. All right. <laughs> All right. Sounds good. Well, this is the end of the podcast for this episode talking about boundaries. And we've talked about uh, taking care of yourself. And I imagine that you're going to 
take what's good and leave the rest behind because I know that everything that we've said here might not just be in agreement and you might just might not resonate with you and that's totally okay. But be sure to subscribe to the podcast on Spotify, subscribe on YouTube, and I'll definitely keep you guys in the loop on how Pablo is doing. Until next time, we'll see you guys on the next episode with our next new guest and make sure that you guys remember you are loved. See you next time. I have this much water left. Jackson, are we lost? We have arrived in Rome. Tyrona. Tatakoa. The Dead Sea. Jordan. Bogota. Japan. Remember, you have value, you have purpose, you are loved, you matter. Focus on your goal and remember you have the impact and the opportunity to make a difference one person at a time. Let's go guys. You're gonna be the president of France in the future. What? I will introduce you to... Oh! I want to live this life so when I get old I can say, Hey, look, I had a great life. Hey guys, welcome to my YouTube channel where I travel around the world and I share my experience, my strength, and my hope with the people I encounter every single day. Travel and journey with me around the world as I see the most beautiful parts of this mundo. Be sure to subscribe, hit the bell notification icon, and remember that you are loved.